Hi. In this video, I will go to the a problem in the computer lab in the lab assignment. And in this problem, I will uh, look at scatter plots and how to build one. Then use language to help us describe what a scatter plot tells us about the relationship between two variables. And then I uh, will proceed to calculate uh, the correlation coefficient statistic. So I'll define it and I'll apply the definition and the terminology surrounding correlation to that. And then we will uh, uh, move to another problem in which we will describe uh, regression, the methodology of regression, and we will uh, build a simple linear model. So the problem I'm opening in is problem from lab four, problem number one. It's a problem about two variables. The problem talks about the capacity of hard drives in terabytes. Terabytes are 1,000 gigabytes. And the second variable is the price of such hard drives. So notice how when you are talking about association between two quantitative variables, the data values must be paired and every row must represent one observation, one who, and every column represents a different what. So we have two what's and eight who's in this case. We have eight data points. And uh, first thing we do when we open a lab question is identify if it's easy to uh, move the information into StatCrunch. So I'm going to copy it to the clipboard and do a control C or a command C. And in addition to that, I am then going to move to StatCrunch. and uh, paste the data in StatCrunch. So I have the variable that we're calling X here being the capacity and Y here being the price. And in order to draw a scatter plot, I go to the graph menu and simply pick a scatter plot, which is near the middle of the list of graphs. Select a scatter plot and pick the explanatory variable to be the size of a hard drive and I'm going to try to predict the price of a hard drive or explain the price of a hard drive based on the size of a hard drive. And I only want to display points. I don't want to connect these points. And what I get is a spatial map of each and every data point where each value of X and Y represents a coordinate of the horizontal axis for X and the vertical axis for Y. So in this case, I'm looking at the sixth data point and uh, this is a hard drive that has a $235 price and a two terabyte capacity. And as you can see, the spatial distribution of data points shows us a strong linear relationship with the exception of one data point here. This data point is one where the capacity of the hard drive is relatively low, but the price is extremely high for uh, how other hard drives of similar capacity are priced. So it could be that this is a very different type of hard drive, um, or it could be that we maintain this hard drive in the data because um, there's no evidence that there's anything wrong with this data point when we compare it to others, other than perhaps in an imperfect market where you have one hard drive extremely expensive for no reason whatsoever, and that could happen. Um, it could also be data error, so we have to check for data entry errors. Um, although that's not a statistical uh, piece of work, that is something that precedes the statistical work. That's what a database uh, or a consultant or a computer analyst would, would check the integrity of the data before a statistician would touch the data. Okay, so that's how we build a uh, scatter plot. Now the question is, what kind of a relationship exists between capacity and price? Well, it seems that we would call this a strong linear direct relationship because most data points line up nearly in a linear fashion, except for one. And so we should be cautious in that that one point could be an, what we call an outlier 
at least with respect to the variable y, at least with respect to price, uh, but not with respect to size. Uh, so it could be an overpriced hard drive. It's uh, point number three, as you can see. So as I return to the problem at hand in the I pick the closest graph to the scatter plot and check for the answer. As I continue, they want me to describe the direction and I can tell it's positive or direct. And I can also tell that the relationship is linear. And it's a relatively strong relationship because almost every point lines up well. And if there is something to worry about, it would be an outlier present. And that would be the hard drive with uh, 200 gigabytes or 0 0.2 terabytes because it seems to be overpriced. So that problem concludes our activity of looking at the scatter plot to identify things to be cautious about and to at least get a, an intuition or a sense for the form, the direction, and the strength of the relationship. In the next problem, we use a similar data set. Notice how in this case, again, the third data point has a, seems to be overpriced. And uh, the language of the problem in fact, tells us that before we proceed, we should remove this data point from our analysis. And upon doing so, we observe that uh, we see statistics from chapter three uh, describing capacity by itself and describing price by itself. And the way we quantitatively describe capacity and price is the center is the mean and the standard deviation is the spread. So, uh, I'm gonna take this table and I'm gonna keep it around so that I remember uh, these values. So the average hard drive is about 1.1 terabytes and hard drives tend to vary in capacity by roughly 1.4 terabytes uh, from 1.1. And the price of hard drives tends to be around $150 and the standard deviation in those prices tends to be about $160. So I'm going to round these numbers. I'm not going to use them uh, exactly as they appear. And, uh, and I'm going to map these two statistics in, the, in, a, in a graph that, um, that looks very much like the, uh, like the graph of a, of a scatter plot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw axes. I'm going to use green for the color of money. So that's going to be price. And I'm going to use blue for the color of data storage. So I'm gonna be measuring capacity horizontally in terabytes. I'm gonna try and develop a sense or an understanding of prices of hard drives based on the capacity of hard drives. And this is in, in dollars for a hard drive. And that's uh, describing price. So price is what I call my response variable and capacity is what I call my explanatory factor. So price will explain, will be explained by capacity. Capacity will explain price. And so in this case, uh, the next thing to do in this uh, two-dimensional setting is uh, to draw yet another set of axes. This time I'm gonna use the color orange and I'm gonna draw a vertical line at the average capacity. And the average capacity 
as we said earlier, it's around 1.1 terabytes. I'm also going to draw another line, this time a horizontal line. And this horizontal line is going to occur at a price of $150. And that's because uh, $150 is the average price. And as you can tell, this orange, uh, this orange, uh, these orange lines intersect. And the point of intersection is the center of the scatter plot. It is where the mean for the capacity and the mean for price are both uh, drawn in this setup. You will also notice that if I were to draw the data, the data would have these uh, points, and then there would be the, the point that we would wanna erase because it's a, it's a data point that's not uh, like the others in the sense that this is a hardened hard drive, not just a storage device, but a storage device with a hard shell. In addition to that, I also know that I can draw other lines and these lines are going to be uh, equidistant from these uh, orange lines. I'm going to draw them in purple and these lines are going to essentially be one standard deviation from each other. So in the vertical direction, every time I draw a line, I'm going to be drawing it with a distance of 1.4 terabytes from the data. So this point here is 2.5 terabytes because that's 1.4 terabytes more. That's, that's one standard deviation above the average. And then I'm going to uh, draw the next one at 3.9 terabytes because that's another uh, 1.4 terabytes. And another 1.4 terabytes from that will be five, 0.3 terabytes. So in essence, notice how I added one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations to the mean. I didn't decline to the left here because this data set is clearly uh, skewed. It's clearly really skewed to the right. It's impossible to have a hard drive that is one standard deviation below the average hard drive because uh, such a hard drive would have um, uh, negative storage capacity, which is impossible. So I'm not going to even go there. I'm going to focus, therefore, on looking at the direct association in this data. And I'm going to be drawing horizontal lines, which are also equidistant to each other by a factor that would be uh, that would be a hundred and sixty dollars more each time because the standard deviation of uh, the price in this context is a hundred and sixty dollars so this would be three hundred and ten Another $160 beyond that would be uh, $470, more or less. And uh, yet another one here would be five, uh, $630. So I've now have been able to basically build a grid that allows me to establish uh, the form and the direction of the association between these data points. And that form is what we refer to as a regression line. Linear regression model in which an intercept and a slope
identify mathematically this particular this particular linear regression model. And uh, this linear regression model will be based fundamentally on how X and Y values locate with respect to each other, i.e. Uh, with the correlation coefficient. So before we can actually build this linear regression model, uh, now that we've used the scatter plot to sort of ex, you know, identify that a linear form is appropriate in this uh, association story, uh, less the outlier, but that we do have a linear direct and strong form, we want to measure exactly how strongly linear in a positive way, in a direct fashion, uh, the variable capacity and the variable price are connected, i.e. the larger the storage capacity of the hard drive, the more expensive the hard drives get. And so we will, uh, in our next video, uh, um, build the correlation factor, and we will use StatCrunch to actually compute it once we define the concept one more time. Thank you for watching this video.